part 22. 22. The prayer over the offerings. This is the prayer that comes right after the offertory, right after the, the people have responded to the priest asking God this. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all of his holy church. As we talked about last week, and this is the prayer that follows directly after that, the prayer over the offerings. Notice now that the bread and wine are called the offerings, the things that are being offered to God. Right now they're bread and wine, blessed by the priest, and soon they will be transubstantiated into the body and blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. So this is an example of one of the prayers that are that is prayed for the prayer of the offerings. The priest says, Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer offered to God the Father through Christ, acknowledging the offering that the people have made and united to the one sacrifice of Christ for the good of for their good, uh, especially uh, the good of salvation. So these prayers are oftentimes oriented towards the glory of heaven, towards the salvation of, uh, of their own souls, the, the souls of others, for um, a pure and, and worthy act of adoration towards God. Another thing to note about the prayer over the offerings is that it is part of the proper prayers. It's one of the propers. Um, that means that the prayer is the prayer that we pray here changes, and it changes according to the liturgical season which we're in. So it's proper to the particular day that we celebrate in the life of the liturgical year. So I read you one from Ordinary Time. We're wearing green. It's, it's, we're not celebrating a particular feast, we're just entering anew and, and powerfully and, and, and mysteriously into the one sacrifice of Christ. But if like this prayer, if we pray this prayer during Easter, you know, it'll have a, a tone related to Easter. If Lent, it'll have a more penitential tone. If Christmas, it'll have a rejoicing tone at the birth of Christ. If a Marian feast day, it'll relate somehow to Our Lady. If a martyr or a saint or a, a, a pastor or a virgin, it, all of the prayers will have a specific connotation to those particular feasts that we're celebrating. And that's that's pretty neat, right? That's cool to have that, to have that um, specification within the prayers that help us to live the liturgical season um, more holistically. Okay, see you next week.